In this tutorial, we want to provide an overview of the NPS dashboard and the various tools that are at your disposal to interpret and get value from your collected data. Now, after you log into your NPS console, you're going to be presented with this screen. This is your home dashboard. From a quick glance, you can immediately tell exactly what is your current NPS score. This score is according to this time frame that's set up here. It might be defaulted to 90, 60, or 30 days, etc. This down here is your previous period score. So if we're looking at the current 60-day time frame, this is the score for your previous 60 days. So in this case, we can immediately tell that our score has gotten slightly less over the last 60 days. Our breakdown is over here on the right. We can see that from our score of 53, that was achieved by getting 119 promoters, 38 passive users, and 24 detractors. And we can see that that's from a total of 181 total responses. And down here we can see the actual breakdown of what we received on a per day basis. If you jump over to the Trends tab, we can immediately start analyzing our data in more value. Now this is demo data and so it's set up to give us information in terms of what it would look like if our response volume was scaling up over time. As a result, we might actually get a little bit more variance in the beginning and then start to see a little bit more stability in our score over time. We have several different options that we can view when we're wanting to interpret our data. For example, right now we're looking at a 30-day rolling average score, which means that the score on November 26th took into account any responses received over the last 30 days. In this case, that's a total of 87 responses for a calculated score of 54. November 25th took in 89 responses for a score of 57. All 89 of those responses were not received on November 25th. They were received on the 30 days prior and including to November 25th. We have other ways of looking at our data as well. For example, we can look at our daily average. This score takes into account only the responses that were received that day. As a result, we will see a lot of variance through our score. For example, here we see a score of zero because we got two responses. Both of them, one negative, one positive, which means that the score equaled out to, a, to an MPS score of zero. Yet a couple days later, we received four responses, all of them being positive, which gave us a score of 100. So a daily average might not be useful for getting your exact score because it needs time to equalize over time. However, it can be useful to get averages such as your average on a monthly basis to see how you're performing quarter over quarter, etc. The Comments tab gives you information in a quick to and easy to digest format of the responses coming in. You can quickly see the highlighted versions of a negative score versus a positive score, and you can, fi you can find and fix items that your users care about. In this case, I can immediately tell that some concerns revolve around performance, spam, too many bugs, etc. I can quickly sc scroll down to find another negative comment. Again, performance, bugs, 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 errors all over the place. Maybe we need to dive into this particular browser and see if there's more issues going on for that browser than we actually understand. The last tab is the code snippet tab. This allows us to deploy our survey in multiple different methods. One of them is a website pop-up where we'll actually pop up something into the user for them to submit the survey. Another option is a dedicated hosted URL where we can provide this link to users for them to go and see the URL on a hosted service. Or we can get the actual HTML code to provide our NPS survey 
in a static location such as an email, etc. Well, that about wraps it up for this video. I hope that it was helpful, and I hope to see you in the future.